when photography was just coming into being, it was black and white. And pretty soon after that, people seemed to want to add color. And even in my parents' generation, a lot of people's high school photos were shot black and white, and then they put in the little blue eyes and the pink cheeks and the blonde hair. I started out that way just doing a little color, but it's gotten more and more pumped up. I started as a sixth grader and I was part of a class of 12 that were all learning photography, black and white photography. And um, it must have been a really good class because three out of the 12 of us have become photographers. Black and white photography was perfect for me back then because I used to go out on little photo shoots in New York City where I lived. Took it all the way through school and then in college took some more. But meantime in college I was an economics government major started working on Wall Street and realizing this is not what I want to do with the rest of my life, so I started taking classes at night at the new school. The more and more I hand colored, I thought this is really what I want to do. I love the color. It was a huge culture shock just moving up here because I worked on a trading desk at Cheers and Lehman Brothers on the 104th floor of the World Trade Center and I was on the phone constantly and I came up here and it was really quiet and my husband would go to work in Burlington and I wouldn't really talk to anyone all day because I didn't know anybody and so I had to sort of push myself out the door to go photograph and find the beauty that was of Vermont. I have sort of bare bones uh, cameras and photographic equipment. This is a 20 year old uh, Mamiya medium format camera. And this makes a negative that's about two and a half times the size of a 35 millimeter. And the good thing about that is I can make really big photos and they'll remain crisp. And this is uh, probably about 25 years old. And um, I use the black and white infrared film in here. And uh, it's a red filter to pick up infrared light. First, I shoot the negative. Then I develop the negative. I'll make a couple small photos on the hand coloring type paper to experiment with. And then once I have it hand colored the way I like it, I go back and print a large one, and then I stick that through a sepia bath, wait till it dries, and then I come up here and add the color to the photograph. Okay, here we go. I apply the color and then I smooth it all around. Um, so I buy cotton balls, the big ones, in 500 count bags from a medical supply company. And then for most of the hand coloring, I use cotton swabs that I make with toothpicks and cotton. And I use hundreds at a time. And uh, unfortunately, I can't make them too far in advance of when I'm hand coloring because they're not as taut and I need them to be taut so they're not leaving cotton on my photos. It's best to do the large area first and then go for the detail work. For 
So I got the photograph covered with paint and then I go back and smooth it over. After I finish the sky, then I'll remove paint that has gotten on the barn from the sky and then I'll put on the colors that I would like. Kodak's black and white infrared film was discontinued. So of course I called Kodak and complained and uh, then went to eBay and bought whatever I could find. And I probably have about 80 rolls in my refrigerator. They're not making a whole lot of new films, so I have not found a replacement yet for that. I usually photograph what I love. And right now, as you can see, it's barns. And for a long time, it was flowers because they made great gift photos. I used to do them with infrared film. And I don't want to waste my infrared film on flowers. <laughs> Year 2000, uh, the paper that Kodak used to make was discontinued. And I did find a substitute, which I really, really liked. And in 2007, I found out this paper was being discontinued. So I bought up everything I could find. And um, I have probably about six more years left. And I keep trying to find a substitute for it. But there aren't new photographic papers being put out right now. This is actually my last box of this size paper. So I try a couple a year and hope I'll replace it. And if not, well, we'll see what I do next. <laughs> With the infrared film, a lot of my work kind of looks dreamy and elegiac. Those photographs look really good and colored because it looks very nostalgic, it's very soft. They make for really great skies. Sometimes the skies are very dark and sometimes they bring out the energy of the clouds. The flowers are um, usually best when I photograph them with infrared film because it picks up the heat of the flowers. So there's a lot of area for me to hand color. And I think they make the flowers glow and just bring out the beauty in them. Lately, it's been very graphic, like my photos of the barns. Just to make shapes out of them, I think they're wonderful and how symmetrical things are. Americana has always been a big subject, sort of discarded places. A lot of my photos are, are very lonely. I'm going to places that have been bypassed so you can sense the abandonment. I've been out on Route 66 three times and there there's a wealth of material between the old diners, the old wigwam motels, vintage cars. One message would be to just look around at your surroundings and you'll see something really amazing. And the other would be to just capture what's part of the American history. The dark room's getting phased out. I think learning how to shoot and develop black and white does add to one's vision. I don't think there's the tone or the contrast in a digital color photo then made into a black and white is quite the same. And I don't think you learn to work with light quite the same either. That's the beauty of black and white. In my day, uh, we've gone from black and white to digital and doing it all on the computer. I have this little niche, which is an old way of doing the craft, and I'm sure our numbers are dwindling, but I love it. I can't imagine doing this on a computer. <laughs> <laughs>